Imagine that you're investigating a phishing email and you've identified a suspicious link within that email. One of the things that you want to do next is to obtain additional context for that link. When it comes to investigating suspicious links, there are certain websites that you can go to to obtain additional context, especially if you wanted to know what that website would look like if the user had gone to that link. In this video, I wanted to share with you my go-tos when I want to investigate suspicious links. Number one, BrowserLink. BrowserLink's main purpose is to test cross-browser functionality. On their site, they promote the usage of safe browsing, meaning that their browsers are sandboxed. In other words, feel free to visit any suspicious links to see what it may output, as that may help further your investigation. BrowserLink has a free and paid version, and the main difference between the two is that the free version has a time limit associated with it, and you'll have to wait in a queue. Whereas the paid version, the time limit is gone and you get instant access. To begin, all we need to do is enter in our URL of interest, select an operating system and browser type along with the version if you want. Then you want to hit test now. For this example, we'll type in google.com and hit test now. And there you go. Nice and easy. BrowserLink has a lot of features and I use this almost daily when I am investigating URLs. Number two, URL scan. Surprisingly, not a lot of people know about URL scan. And if you're one of them, I'm happy to share with you how awesome this site is. Now I won't go too much into detail on URL scan in this video because I've created a video right here talking about URL scan. The major difference between URL scan and browser link, the one that I introduced earlier, is that URL scan literally scans your URL and outputs the information to you. Whereas BrowserLink, you can navigate the site itself and click around if you want to. Again, if you are interested in URL scan and you want to learn more about it, I highly encourage you to check out the video that I did on URL scan. Number three, Chasm. Chasm is something that I recently started to use as I wrap my head around it. You can think of Chasm as a container for literally anything as it seems. On their site, Chasm is a container streaming platform which allows streaming containerized apps and desktops to end users. Pretty powerful stuff. Chasm has both a community and a paid version. With the community version, you will be required to install this on your own server, on-prem or in the cloud. Whereas the paid version offers you a software as a service solution for you. What I like about Chasm is that it is really fast and easy to tear down when you're done your investigation. And it is not just limited to web browsers. Recently, I was using Chasm to spin up Remnux through my web browser. In a future video, I will provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how we can set up Chasm and get it up and running. So if you're interested, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. Number four, Wanna Browser. For those that simply want to know the source code for a certain site, Wanna Browser is your friend. Wanna Browser has the ability to specify a user agent. Because, well, some sites don't show you the content unless a specific user agent is being used to view that site. Another feature that Wanna Browser has is that you can specify a refer URL. If you think about drive-by downloads, these typically happen via a refer URL. Lastly, you can search the URL using a get or post request. For this video, we'll enter in google.com and leave everything as is and hit the get request. Instantly, we're presented with both the info and headers as well as the body. Using the info section, we can perform additional analysis on the provided IP using IP reputation tools. If you wanna learn more about IP reputation tools, I've created a video right here that you can go ahead and check it out. The next is headers and headers will provide you with, well, header information. However, the meat is in the body section as this section may contain information that will quickly discern whether or not the site is suspicious or not. And at the bottom, there are third-party links that Wanda Browser offers. However, some of them are dead links, so I personally don't even use those. Number five, URL to PNG. Last but not least, URL to PNG offers what is called screenshot as a service. In all honesty, I rarely use this site, but I thought it'd be worth a mention just in case some people are interested in it. Essentially how it works is that you feed it a website of interest 
and URL to PNG will go out and take a screenshot of said site. In the past, when I did use URL to PNG, I would typically feed it a link found in a phishing email because this will quickly tell me whether or not that site was a credential harvester or not. On the site itself, enter in google.com and check I'm not a robot. Unless you are, then I have some questions for you. Click on the camera button and instantly on the left-hand side, you should see a screenshot of the site that you had entered. Those are the five sites that I currently use or used in the past whenever I wanted to investigate URLs. I highly encourage you to bookmark all of these resources if you haven't done so already. So the next time the user visits evil.com, you know exactly where to look. That is it for the video and I hope you found it informative. If you enjoyed it, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.